First question is from a DeFeo one. What's the best strategy to lose body fat and build muscle mass? Focus on body fat reduction first or a combination of both, which seems difficult with the caloric restriction or surplus. You know, this is actually a cool question because for me, it, it, it kind of depends where where the person is at in their in their fitness journey if they're doing it on their own. I personally, I remember when I first started, it was like heavy focus one direction. It was just like if I'm bulking, I'm bulking, and it's like all committed to there. Yeah, uh, and same thing for cutting. Where now it's it's different. And in fact, when I started, uh, m you know, coming back into fitness, I talk about the you know turning on Instagram with the intentions to building a fitness bu business around it, and I was going from fat to fit. My goal was, and what I posted was, I was 212 pounds, and I was, uh, I think, 19.6 or about 20% body fat. And my goal was actually not to let my weight change. I wanted to show people, watch me ch completely change my body composition, but not really fluctuate weight. And I never let my weight go north or south more than about four four pounds or four or five pounds or so, you know, give or take. And of course, everyone's seen the the transformation difference. Uh, I think that is a healthier, smarter approach to it, but could be very challenging and mostly challenging, in my opinion, on the mental aspect. Because the average client that's just kind of getting started and they come to you and they say, I want to lose 20 pounds of fat. And you go, okay, cool, but we're not going to move on the scale in six yeah. for six months. It's way less dramatic that way. It is. And it's also really hard for them to, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror every single day, and your ultimate goal is to lose 20 pounds of fat. Because I lost 20 pounds of fat, just didn't see it on the scale. You know, I pretty much eliminated 20 pounds. I just added muscle and just replaced that, completely changed the body composition, which I would think is one of the better ways to do it. Unfortunately, it's extremely difficult for clients to be able to do that because they're not seeing any movement on the scale and they're looking at themselves in the mirror. What, what have you guys seen in your experience? Yeah, when you, you have to think, at the you have to think long term and the reason why you have to think long term unless your goal is to sh is real short term like i want to get i want to look a particular way and then i don't care what happens afterwards i don't care if i gain all the body fat back and i don't care if i fall back out of shape but if you do care and you want to get to a particular goal but you also want to keep it forever you want to stay fit forever then there is a strategy that is a little bit better and this is just something i learned with clients and typically it's like this client comes to me average person wants to lose Body fat, that's the most common goal. And my goal with them is to build their strength. My goal with them is to get them more fit. My goal is to... Even if they want to lose. 20, even if they want to lose right. uh, body fat. Um, because I know that results in a, in a metabolism that burns more calories. And it makes the weight loss and the fat loss easier later on. It also makes it more permanent. Now, there's no such thing as a guaranteed permanent you know, result. Um, but you can definitely do things that'll make it more likely that it's going to be easier to maintain. And it's far easier to maintain, uh, in my experience working with clients, to start with, let's get you stronger, let's get you fit. So let's say somebody comes to me and they want to lose a lot of weight. And uh, I, I look at their food because I'll typically talk to them about their nutrition. And let's say we figure that they're averaging about, you know, I don't know, 1,800 calories a day. So you're eating 1,800 calories a day. Let's do this. Let's keep that the same. Just keep your calories the same. We're going to be increasing your activity just because you're working out. You weren't working out before. I'm focusing on building strength, building muscle. I'm going to do body fat tests with you. Body fat tests are important. Uh, I don't use them all the time, but in this case, they are important because it is important to show the person that although, like Adam said, the scale may not be moving, that their body composition may be changing. So oftentimes, I'd have a client and we would do this strategy. I'd test their body fat and he'd be like, okay, you dropped 2% of body fat. Now your weight on the scale stayed the same. This is what that this let me let me show you what that means. It means that you've gained three pounds of muscle, but it also means you've lost three pounds of body fat. And look, you've lost a quarter inch circumference around your waist. And the reason why I do that is because it, it's a, those are valuable tools to show somebody that their body's progressing in a way that is going to keep them kind of feeling like they're getting some return for the time that they're investing. But, uh, you know, having someone – because what I used to do early on, someone would come in to want to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 
I'd focus all on that. We're going to get you to lose 20, 30 pounds. Yeah, just shed it. Because yeah. you, you wanted them to be happy right out of the gates. You wanted them to feel like, you know, things are happening and, and, and results are, are happening. So as a trainer, a new trainer, like half your goal is to like, I could shed this weight and I could do it in a, you know, an efficient amount of time where, you know, as, as a more seasoned trainer, you realize like this is a long game. This is, we need to set them up so this is going to be, you know, sustainable. So that, that definitely is something that shifted for me in terms of starting them out and just focusing purely on strength training, but uh, definitely keeping in mind like the calorie intake and trying to, to, to manage it at a certain level where we could maintain that strength, but start shaving away yeah. at, at the leanness. Yeah, think about it this way. Uh, you're a, you, let's say you're a contractor um, and someone comes to you and says, I want to build a house and I want to build it super fast. You're like, well, okay, um, I could build this in a, in a few months, but you know, we're not going to build a foundation. We're just going to put it on the ground put it, slap it together, and then you'll have a house. Now, we know what that will happen with that house. It's not going to last very long. It's like very made dangerous. from Ikea. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to fall apart. Or the contractors will be like, look, I can't build it in, in, in 30 days because it takes at least that long just to get build the foundation, make sure everything's done properly. But then we're going to have a house that's going to last you for a very, very long time. It's the same thing. It's the same thing when you're talking about uh, training your body. So if your goal is to just lose the weight and you really don't care about anything else, that's easy. That's an easy thing. You know what you do? Do cardio every day, cut your calories by 500 to 1,000 calories, voila. And I really don't care how you cut those calories. And so it could be low carb, you could go vegan, you could do paleo, it really doesn't matter. Cut your calories, do shit tons of cardio, you're going to lose a lot of weight, but you're going to be in a bad position. You're going to be in a situation where you – fluctuate in body weight and to maintain wh whatever you've lost is going to be all but impossible. Not to mention that, but it's also going to be really difficult to do with the other part. They said, you know, the best strategy to lose body fat and build muscle. If you're in a really low calories and you're also doing a ton of cardio, you might lose weight. You sure shit probably aren't going to build you're muscle. You're losing muscle. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah, you're no. not going to build muscle there. Where if you don't reduce a bunch of calories, you just kind of replace some of your probably – uh, I think what we call empty calories, you mm. know, instead of drinking a, a soda that's 200 and something calories of sugar. Did you guys ever get the people, that, I mean, they would look at, I want to build muscle and burn body fat at the same time. So they would do like a circuit training where it's like, you know, they're going to add the strength element to it, but have the conditioning there at the same time, thinking that, you know, I'm building and I'm cutting at the same time. Right. No, that's, I think that's a common, a common myth is that, that that's a good strategy. I think if you take somebody who is, eating a good amount of calories for their body weight already and you just add things that are into their diet that they're probably lacking and we've talked about this many times before fiber protein whatever it is that they're not getting enough of and you replace some of the empty calories with ones that their body needs and you strength train them they should reduce body fat and build muscle the the hardest part i'm telling you is the the mental piece it's just that's the that's the area that i always had to speak to as a trainer that listen, when you do it the right way, it's slow. When mm -hmm. you do it the right way, it's a slow, gradual, you know, week over week, little tiny. And this is also why I advocate for a, you know, a photo every Friday. You know, I used to tell clients, like, just take a photo every Friday because it's amazing when you're looking at yourself every single day, multiple times a day, to not see that change. But when you have this photo that you took four weeks or six weeks ago and you still feel like because the scale hasn't moved and you see your body and it seems so far away still to lose 30 pounds and you're nowhere near your goal that you haven't really changed and you're upset and then you have this comparison photo of four or six weeks ago you can really see the difference body composition wise when you have something to compare right next to versus looking at it every single day and expecting to see this great change yeah my favorite thing was be would be when a client goes to a family event or a reunion mm -hmm. or something and they'd been working out with me for four or five months, and the scale hasn't really moved a whole lot. Maybe they lost a few pounds. And then they'd come back from the event, and they'd be like, oh, my gosh. Like 10 people came up yeah, to me. everybody's and, commenting. And commenting on, like, asking me how I lost so much weight. And, and I tell them I didn't lose that much weight at all. And how many times is that a client, too, that's also the same client that was complaining that they don't feel like they've seen any change in results? Well, every time. That's what convinced them. It's the same them. person. Yeah, they're, they're like, oh, I don't feel like I'm changing, yeah. and can we speed this up? And then they go see a family member yeah. they haven't seen in two months, and the member makes a big deal about what they yeah. look like. Now, back to what Justin was talking about, about the circuits and, and the, you know trying to do this like calorie burn, muscle building workout to do the – Fat loss, muscle building. Here's the deal. In order to lose body fat, you have to be at a calorie deficit. So you have to cut your calories below your maintenance. 
that's already sending a strong signal to the body that says become more efficient with calories and burn less calories. Your body wants to adapt to that. It doesn't want to always burn more calories than you're taking in because that would obviously lead to death. So your body's like, okay, we want to slow the metabolism down. One of the most efficient ways to do that is by paring muscle down. This is why if you go and just do tons and tons of cardio all the time and cut your calories, a lot of the weight you're going to lose is muscle. So you're already cutting your calories. You want to offset that. And the best way to offset that is by sending the strongest muscle building signal you could possibly send, which is not circuit training. Circuit training of all the resistance training type modalities is the worst muscle building one. It just is. Yeah. You know, you want to train kind of like a strength athlete slash bodybuilder. You want to try and build while you're cutting while your you're calories cutting. Mm -hmm. because then you're sending two signals, build muscle, but now we need to, you know, also get leaner. And what'll end up happening is you'll either not lose any muscle or you'll build even a little bit of muscle while burning body fat. And, and studies show this. Studies are quite clear on this. If you just cut calories or if you cut calories and do cardio and don't include resistance training, some studies show as much as half of the weight you lose is muscle. And that puts you in a bad position long term.